Okay, I was told I can go ahead and start. So, go ahead and start. Hey, I'm Dwayne. Thanks for coming to my talk. Stop committing your secrets. Get hooks to the rescue. Quick curiosity before we start. Who here actually uses Git hooks on the regular already? One. I see one hand. Good. You can leave. Everybody else, this is talks for you. I'm Dwayne. I came down here from Chicago. Uh, I've been a developer advocate since 2016. Find me out there on Twitter at MC Dwayne. It's on the bottom of the screen if you forget. Um, happy to talk to you about anything tech related or rock and roll or a lot of other things. I work for a company called Git Guardian. We are a platform focused on secret leakage detection and remediation. Happy to tell you more about that. Actually, we'll be mentioning them later in the talk, mentioning one of our products. So enough of that for right now. We live in this constant game of cat and mouse. That's the world of security. We're constantly trying to outdo them, and they're trying to outdo us. And I wouldn't say they're bad people in general. I think they're just there for the money and the resources. The more I learn about security, the more I think that's true. But they are after our resources and our data, constantly. What this looks like in the wild, if you were at the talk earlier today, much more in depth than I'm gonna talk about it, but Uber uh, was hacked by Lapsus, going in through a uh, phishing attempt, successful phishing attempt, and then through PowerShell scripts, found a bunch of hard-coded secrets that were then used to pwn Uber. Toyota is one of my favorite breaches. This is how I got on the front of Hacker News for about eight hours by writing about this. Um, Toyota hired a subcontractor that maintained their T-Connect repo, accidentally pushed part of it public, maybe accidentally, we don't know. The point is, it had a key to a data server, sat out there for five years before anybody noticed. Samsung, who here has a Samsung Galaxy? Nobody's hand went up. Um, everybody knows the source code for Samsung Galaxies now, thanks again to Lapsus. Inside of the code base, we found over 6,000 secrets laying in there. And back in August, another breach happened, and we think it's related, but there's no direct evidence that that's true. All we know is that secrets got hard-coded and released. This is one of my favorites, AstraZeneca. This happened last month. Developer hard-coded a credential for a testing environment, which should be all good because it's a test environment, right? Except somebody else pushed real data into it, which isn't great. So credentials for an undisclosed amount of patients was released or leaked. We still don't know the full impact. They are really tight-lipped about this one. And all these stories, these are companies that take security very seriously. But someone left the key out front. You can have the greatest defense in the entire universe, but if someone just literally hands out the keys, they're gonna get in. And here's one of my favorite examples of good security in action, because they bought a really secure lock, and I don't know what's on the other side of this door, but I'm guessing it's pens or staplers or something that's, yeah, we shouldn't, we should put it behind a lock, but at the same time, people just gotta get their jobs done Let's slap this number up there, because that's a complicated lock for, for pens. And of course, that's silly. We would never do this in computer science. We would never do this as developers, except we do every single day. I know I've done this. I just gotta make sure that database works. I just gotta make sure that API endpoint is up. And how's the easiest way to do that? Well, I'll just hard code it real quick, but I'll take it right back out, I promise, except now I have a fire over here to fight, and in Slack, I'm hitting three different places where I need to check out another branch. So, oh, I'm not on line nine anymore. I'm way down in the code, like line 400 working on something else. I just gotta commit, push, and move on to the next thing. This is a serious problem. So Git Guardian, we make a state of secret sprawl report every year. That's the URL at the bottom if you wanna go read it yourself from last year. Uh, we found over six million secrets just hanging out in GitHub repos publicly. We know it's way more than that uh, across all the other hosts out there. The number that I always talk about is the three out of every thousand commits that we see has some kind of credential in it. And this is constantly increasing. I can tell you next year that number is gonna be higher and it's not a good thing. So who's ultimately responsible for this? 
Unfortunately, it's everybody's job, which means it's no one's job because everybody's in DevOps. You sitting in this room, you are part of the DevOps cycle somehow, some way, I promise you. In the best of organizations, the security team is outnumbered 100 to 1 by developers. This is a quote from Alex Rice uh, from HackerOne at Security at 2022 earlier this year. And that number really stuck with me because this is the best of organizations. If we do the math extrapolation for um, a team of about 400 developers, that's from what we've seen working with customers on average av per uh, security expert, there's about three and a half thousand hard coded secrets inside the org, which is a staggering number. So it has to be, hey, this shift left and let's push this over onto the shoulders of the developers. This might seem like a complete non sequitur, but if you're going to speak to a developer, you need to speak to them in their language and get love it or hate it, confused by it or mastered it, Git is the default de facto language of how DevOps works and how developers think about code. It doesn't matter if it's PHP, JavaScript, whatever, Python. At the end of the day, what they do with that code translates into Git. And Git is awesome. Git, almost all developers use this. 93.6% of all code bases on Earth are in Git right now. Uh, according to the last numbers I saw, 96% um, of all developers use it daily. So Git is awesome, and it's this universal language we all use, but it's also the stupid content tracker. That's what Linus called it. That's still, if you type man git into bash, that's still what it spits out, because um, it's stupid. It doesn't know what it's doing. It knows what you told it, but in and of itself, it doesn't make your code any more or less secure. So everybody using Git, eh, it can be a good thing. Git does have a way to help with security. Git ignore, for instance. Um, does anybody, can anybody spot the, the problem with this? There's, there's an, I'll give you a hint. It's right here. Yeah, they commented out the .env file in this particular instance of git ignore. So git ignore is awesome because it will say, all right, git, don't pay attention to this file or this path at all, and you can safely store things in env files and um, secrets.json's and things like that. And we should be. But if we also are commenting out that line or not even adding the git ignore, then it's going to include that in source control. And again, we push that out to the environment, uh, out to the universe, and people are going to find it and get into our stuff. And there are awesome solutions out there. Everybody should be using HashiCorp Vault. I don't work for HashiCorp, probably won't ever, but I love them. I love Vault. Uh, again, I don't work for Azure, but Azure Key Vault is one of my favorite architectures for key management. Just is, personal, personal preference. Um, and their documentation is really cool. And if everybody would just use a combination of git ignore and key management, then I could stop talking and I would be able to stop giving this talk and I'd, have much, I'd sleep much better at night. But unfortunately, developers keep doing this. And I say developer with me included. Because eventually we have to just test and see if something worked. And the problem isn't that we tested and see if it worked. The problem is we forgot to take it out. And then we committed it. And then we pushed it. And that leads to a bad time. Because in theory, you can get it back out. If your next commit is you removing the secret and making the comment, removed that thing I shouldn't have put in there. Guess what? You've just told every attacker on earth where to look for your secret. It's in the previous commit. So let's not forget how Git works. Git takes a compression of the entire file every time it's changed, a new one. And then it stacks them up on top of each other, and that's what our Git history is. So at any point in time, you can say, I'm going to Git check out this commit that happened you know, 50 commits back, 100 commits back, beginning of the project back and it resets the file system to that state. So just removing the secret in and of itself doesn't fix the problem. You have to remove it completely from history, which is not hard, it's just painful. It's painful for a couple things. It's painful because it wrecks everybody else's version of history. 
And now you have to go have that ex uh, conversation with the entire team on how you need to fix history. And also, you have to have the conversation that, hey, I did something really wrong, and I've just exposed a lot of things. So what we need is some kind of robot. These robots are awesome because they do the same thing over and over. They're repetition machines, and they can stop us from finding our secrets every time. Git gives us a way to build this robot. I say bot very generically here. Gives us a way to automate this process, I should probably, probably say. Git hooks is this beautiful automation system built into Git. It's been there forever, been there since the beginning because Linus needed this for certain things. And it's basically this. I have an idea of something I need to automate. When I do a thing in Git, Git will trigger the thing I built. And then eventually wipe my mouth with a napkin. Githooks.com, if you don't go to any other website from a result of viewing this talk, go to Githooks.com. It is awesome. Matthew Hudson uh, has done an amazing job of putting together not only an explanation of how Githooks works, but also beautiful examples of what you can really do with it. But these are the 17 hooks in Git, and three of them happen before a commit happens, and one of them happens after you've pushed, but before it's received on the other end. These are inflection points where you can tell Git, hey, check to make sure I got everything right. And if I didn't get everything right, well, don't let me make that commit. And if you're like, well, my developers are never going to do that all the time, whoever's in charge of your corporate GitHub, uh, GitHub Enterprise, your um, GitLab Enterprise, your Bitbucket Enterprise, or however you're managing your version control system across the enterprise, um, they can put in pre-receive hooks to, hey, let's make sure we stop those secrets before they get onto our server. So GitHub comes with a bunch of example hooks. So if you have a machine in front of you right now, you can open up a git repo, uh, look in the .git folder, there'll be a hook folder, and it'll probably contain exactly these. And if you go look at those scripts, they contain things like rev parse and weird bits of Perl, because let's never forget, git came from Linus Torvald. It was specifically a set of scripts he wrote to help him manage the patches when building the Linux kernel. He even said in the original email where he introduced it to the community, I don't think it's going to become a full-blown SCM. It's just something I use for my personal work. Three months later, he hands it over to Junio, and that's the story of Git. So if you go look at the examples, like, well, why would I do that? Rev parse is one of my favorite commands in Git, side, quick side note. Um, if you go look at the manual for it, the actual description is um, retrieve and massage parameters. Massage. What other part of computer science uses the word massage in its documentation? Because I still don't know what exactly that means. Anyway, these scripts, while there's all those samples, if you just take off the word sample, if you remove the word sample at the end, the um, extension sample, then every time commit message triggers, it will run what's ever in there. Uh, this is one I run myself, because I like dad jokes. Point is, you can make these things do anything you want. Git hooks are just scripts. So if the environment's available, the script is valid, it's going to go ahead and run it. Uh, props to Ed Thompson, uh, who used to maintain NPM. I forget what he's doing these days. But he wrote git dad, which is a little script you can run for uh, if you mistype git dad instead of git add. It will still do the add, but it will also tell you a dad joke. So that's where I got the idea. Um, but you can make it do anything, including the thing that I originally was going to talk about, or originally was talking about, which is we need something mechanically every time we go to make a commit, we'll look for username, passwords, API keys, security certs, anything else you can think of that is a credential. And if it's there, throw an error, don't make the commit, and tell me what went, what went wrong. The good news is you can build this yourself with some straightforward regex. Who loves building regex? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, regex is fun, don't get me wrong, uh, but rely on it for production use is terrifying. But you can. All you're really doing is saying, hey, uh, git grep. Git grep is one of the cool tools included in git because it's a subset of Linus's tool set. 
um, it go, dismisses the problem of what it's searching and just looks for the patterns inside of all the included indexed files. So git grep is just a shortcut to use grep. So we can say, hey, go look for things that look like passwords or 20 th things that are 20 characters long that contain all uppercase and all numbers. That would be AWS credentials or tokens. Uh, and let's throw some errors if that happens. And again, you can build this by hand, but then you gotta maintain it. And then you gotta account for edge cases. And then you gotta account for allowed patterns. And then you gotta account for false positives. And then you gotta sell it to your team. And then, and then, and then. So you probably don't wanna build this yourself. The good news is that this has already been built a number of times by a number of people. Um, I'm gonna talk about three of them. There are more than three in the universe, but I'm going to name three. And full disclosure, I work for one of them. I didn't used to include them on this list, but then they hired me. Uh, the first one I'm gonna talk about is AWS Labs Get Secrets. So if you are all 100% bought in AWS, everything you do is AWS, I would probably start with this one, honestly. Because the AWS Labs team built Get Secrets. Um, to look before a commit is made, all three of those checks, and see, hey, is there an AWS credential in here? We know what they look like because we build them, so let's go ahead and check, and they'll throw an error if we get there. The awesome thing is it's free, it's open source. Um, triple checks, you can extend it because it's open source. Again, you have to know regex to really do this effectively, but it does it out of the box. Uh, you can extend it out of the box, not too hard. But it is AWS specific, so extending it means knowing exactly what you're looking for in those other patterns. Again, not impossible. People have already done this in open source. I'm not gonna name their repos because they're a bunch of one-off repos, but you can find them. And for like G Google Cloud product, uh, for Azure, people have already extended this. So, second one is Trufflehog. Who here has actually run Trufflehog? I got three, three hands, two hands. I see two hands. Maybe I saw two. Um, Trufflelog is an open source repo that will let you use a pre-commit hook. Uh, you can also do um, other searches. Not as, it can do more than what I'm talking about for this use case, but I'm gonna narrow it for this use case for today, which is looking for things before you commit them. It will help, it'll absolutely let you do that. It's free, it checks the pre-commit level, it does require pre-commit framework to be installed, and that is a requirement for your developers to like have to deal with and live with. So it's an additional thing to build on top of Git hooks. But it'll help you manage Git hooks. So I actually highly recommend looking into pre-commit if you are interested in Git hooks in general, because their documentation's awesome, and they can give you a lot of really good advice. Uh, you can run it as a GitHub action, but that catches your secret after it's already made it onto a platform. This is also why I'm not gonna talk about GitHub's native solution for this, because it only checks after the secret has made it onto GitHub, because that's where it cares about it. Um, that last one, your mileage may vary, but go read your own reviews on high false positives. And your own testing might prove differently. Uh, then the one I work for, Git Guardian, we make a product called GG Shield. It's open source repo. It does rely on the platform API. So while it is all open source, it is calling to a third party platform, that's us. Uh, one of the things I love about it is it also includes the pre-receive hook, so you can install this on the server side and kick out and stop any credentials from accidentally making there. I had to overcome this this week as I started contributing to docs um, because guess what, I, I wrote something that looked very close to a secret and had to call somebody to actually get the commit to be accepted. Um, anyway, installation is really straightforward and all it does is throw one line into a git, con uh, git hook for pre-commit or pre-push. Uh, but it does require Git Guardian, which you can use for free if, for individual teams individuals and teams of up to 250 uh, for open source projects. Um, because it's platform-based, we're constantly adding 
new patterns to it. Right now we're checked for 350 known patterns. Um, and we're always adding more. And you can extend it yourself if you need to. But it is API rate limited because it is a platform. So mileage may vary on that, depending on how many times you push. It might be the right for you, might not be. I don't know, your testing will tell you. What, what does this look like in action? Because I've told you like what all these things do. Well, you've already seen what this looks like in action because that's what I built earlier with the example of just building out a git grep. I try to commit a secret. Here in my config YAML. And here's git guardian. It specifically spits out, GG Shield spits out, hey, here's the thing you tried to commit. There's what we think it is. It's an API key uh, and fail. We're not gonna let you do it. Not gonna show truffle hog, not gonna show AWS, they all, but they look basically identical. They're the same use case. Hey, we found a secret, we stopped it, and let's move on with your day. So in conclusion, don't hard code your secrets. If you could just convince everyone on earth to stop doing this, the rest of this is irrelevant. Please don't hard code your secrets. If you do hard code secrets, do not commit those secrets and push them. Again, if we could just stop there, everybody would be happy. Use automation to help you though. There's a lot of ways you can automate. I didn't really dig into it, but I'm seeing I got a couple more minutes here, so I'll just rant on it for a second. I'm talking about one specific security use case of Git hooks. You're only limited by your imagination. If you wish your developers would run these, let's say five different testing tools every single time they made a commit, but you know they're just not gonna manually do it, build them a Git hook. Test it out your machine and then give it to them and say, hey, just throw these in place. It takes you no extra time. It's non-disruptive to your workflow, assuming all the tests passed. And if they don't pass, then we've just saved a lot of time. The farther left you can find the problem, the cheaper it is to solve. If you can solve something on a whiteboard, whiteboard ink is really cheap. If you find it in production, that could mean your business goes away. That's the difference between those two edges. So use automation as early as you can. And there's open source tools to help you. You don't have to build this yourself. In fact, I recommend not building this yourself for the most use cases. Um, but I'm Ed Duane. I live in Chicago. I love rock and roll, improv, karaoke. Hit me up about any of that stuff or more. I'm MC Dwayne on Twitter, and thanks very much for coming to talk. I got time for like one question. Thank you.